Hey everyone, it's Kai and Lafayette, and this is The, the Theory, Theory of, of Living. Living. Thanks for tuning in. We are able to bring you this episode thanks to our Patreon members. Patreon is a subscription-based platform where people can provide support for content creators like us. Thanks to our Patreon members and supporters, we are able to provide free content on the podcast and weekly episodes. By being a Patreon member, you'll have access to our entire podcast library, full video and audio episodes, along with much more. If you like this episode and you feel it adds value to your life, or you hate it, please subscribe on Patreon and or leave your review on Apple Podcast. And don't forget to mention it to your friends over your next beer. Truly, thank you again, and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now we're in a challenging situation because we're in mm -hmm. a car. Right. But what he was saying essentially is that yeah. it's better to be one of those people that can at least say they've tried. Mm hmm Rather than somebody who just looks at it from the outside mm -hmm. and has an opinion about it. Right. Because, again, any yeah. criticism at the end of the day is merely an opinion. And some opinions mm -hmm. are more valuable than others. Yeah. An opinion coming from somebody who has tried and has gone through a similar and same experience yeah. actually has credible criticism. Yeah. And, again, somebody might be able to guess some things and be right in their criticism yeah. without the experience, but... It still feels like it doesn't weigh as much because yeah. maybe if they'd gone through the experience, they would have said things in a more convincing or productive way. Productive way. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's valuable. like, you know, to me, even if that person has experienced what you're doing, um, I think that that makes his, his opinion and criticism a little more valuable than others. But still, your experience is completely different from that person. Yeah. You know, so you can take it, you know, um, in a productive way, the criticism, and maybe try to assess your um, experience and your, you know, your challenge uh, in a positive way. But don't don't take it too too seriously. Uh, that's my that's my um, uh, opinion about it because. Our exper experiences are all unique, you know. Therefore, even if that person has that experience of what you're doing, it's, it's still very different. Yeah. Maybe your situation is a little harder or easier. I don't know, you know. Well, you could be, um, you know, you, you, you could have more disturbances in, in yeah. your in your experiences, you know. So just don't take it too seriously. You yeah. know? Just focus on what you're doing because your experience is the most important thing. Because again, without the experience, what is it? <laughs> without the experience, knowing it is really a completely different thing, right? Yeah. You're gonna arrive after experience, um, after that experience, you're gonna arrive at certain conclusion, certain truth. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very personal mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. The personal exactly. truth. For for that word means to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of varying meaning there. But let's talk. Uh, Let's talk about some of the challenges that mm -hmm. we've experienced yeah. with just the, the recent 30-day yeah. climbing challenge. Mm -hmm. I found the 4x4 four four to be the really hard, difficult section. Mm -hmm. it, so we would do that in the middle of the week, Wednesday. For people that don't know climbing or haven't watched any of the vlogs, right. a 4x4 four four is essentially you climb something four times in a row without stopping up and down. And then once you've completed it, you rest for four minutes, and you repeat that four times. Mm -hmm. So it's power endurance. It's similar to sprinting and stopping. That's probably the closest thing. It's like high-intensity interval training or HIT. Mm -hmm. And it sucks. It's hard. You're climbing way below your grade. Mm -hmm. So you already feel like, oh, this should be easy, but it's hard. And you're just out of breath. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult. So I was feeling... A lot of the times when we were doing that, man, this sucks. I'm not improving. This is not getting any easier. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is worth doing. Maybe this is a waste of time. But at the end of the 30 days, we went and <laughs> retested ourselves yeah. on something that I didn't think it would have much of an impact on. And it pretty much doubled my score on that yeah. one specific thing, which was hanging from a bar for time. Yeah, It was way easier. And even when we did it and let go... I didn't let go because I was, like, going to give up. I just didn't think I could make it another 30 more seconds for the next point. Yeah. But my arms weren't 
sore. I didn't feel out of breath mm -hmm. compared to the first time 30 days yeah. prior. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is awful. I remember thinking the night before, just stressed out like, oh, mm -hmm. I don't want to have to go through this pain, the suffering yeah. of hanging on the bar. And this time it was so easy. There was like no pain at all. Almost. Yeah, I was very surprised too. Wow. So before all this training, um, I failed at about a minute and 27 seconds. And um, after four weeks of this training, I finished at two minutes and five seconds, something like that. So massive, massive improvement. Yeah. I mean, anyone who has done this before, just hanging on a bar <laughs> as long as you can, you understand after like last 20 seconds or even five seconds how long it is. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, yeah crazy it's pretty so yeah so improving that last you know portion of 30 seconds like that's massive like a crazy amount of improvement yeah. yeah yeah so i was like wow this can actually happen and i mean obviously not just that but also climbing itself you know i was able to do uh, all the grades that i w wasn't able to do before training um so that was you know i mean Nothing but pleasure through this <laughs> challenge, you know, because, you know, one thing that I like to do and another thing is that I could actually experience that improvements through my body. So yeah. that was really great. Yeah. And you also surprise yourself the ability to rise to an occasion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't set a bar yeah, because we're afraid we can't reach that bar. But a lot of times, actually, the bar was set too low and that's yeah. why you completed it. Yeah. And again, other people have the opposite problem where we set a bar way too high that's mm -hmm. too far away. And I think we do that in order to not hold ourselves accountable. Mm -hmm. Because if the goal is lofty and far away, well, yeah, you know, I mean, who could ever really achieve that? That was a crazy goal. Right. So it's definitely a balance, balancing act of sometimes setting the bar too low, sometimes setting it too high. Mm -hmm. And every now and again, you set just right. And mm -hmm. when you do, and you go through it, it's a wonderful experience. You, yeah. You gain competency yeah. in life that applies to more than just whatever challenges. Mm -hmm. And another challenge that we've ran into recently was right now we should be in Thailand. We should be on a beach in Thailand. <sighs> yeah, actually, yeah, let's talk about that because that's a big part right now in our uh, life. Um, it's huge. Yeah. So we were going to fly out last week, Thursday. So we had to do the test 72 hours in advance, and it was this specialized test, RT-PCT, right? Or PCRT? PCR. Yeah, PCR. Mm -hmm. So only a few places will do it to get it in time for the 72 hours. So it was like a $300 test that we both had to do. Mm -hmm. And I woke up that morning, the night before, I didn't feel too great. Woke up, I was mm -hmm. sick, feverish, and I'm like, I think I have COVID, man. So we went and got the test, and again, finding the testing center, what a pain in the butt. I yeah. couldn't. They're not answering the phone. They don't respond to emails. Huge pain in the butt. Yeah. So we go get the test. I end up being positive for COVID. So this ruins the the end of our climbing challenge, mm -hmm. and then it ruins the ability to go to Thailand. We were going to Thailand on the test and go, which yeah. is something they've canceled after December 22nd because we put all our data in mm. to the Thai government beforehand. I emailed them weeks and weeks to get it approved for both of us. Yeah. Finally get approved. Everything's working out. It's looking good. And then that happens. So now yeah. we're in the process of rescheduling everything. You know, money was lost on hotel rooms, travel insurance just a battle i'm telling yeah. you a real challenge to get everything done mm -hmm. but now we know how to navigate the system a little better yeah we've set up better precautions you know not going out before we're going to go to the test we'll do it home test first and we'll do all these things in order to be successful this time mm -hmm. and that's going to apply to not only traveling this one time but for the rest of our lives how we navigate it how we go about it and again, a lot of people could just be like, well, it's just not meant to be. Like, give up. Mm -hmm. Traveling is not an option right now with COVID. What are you, what are you thinking? But right. we just understand a more effective way to travel now. Yeah, that also, you know, that thought process is possible because you've gone through it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
you just talked about it, getting that approval from Thai government was pain in the ass. I mean, it was weeks of process. Yeah. But we know it is possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can be done. Yeah. You know, and the travel insurance and all that. I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's possible, right? I mean, it's easy to give up because that's the easiest thing to do. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is just make a call. I'm not doing it. But making things happen that are hard, um, once you do that, like, you learn a lot, right? Yeah. So you can go through that again, you know. I mean, it's still pain in the ass, but you can do it. Yeah, the learning yeah. part at least is not as difficult. I know what to go click, which website. Mm -hmm. I know who to email, yeah. which emails to hit up for the Thai government. Right. So all that, a little more effective. Like, yeah. I understand the training routine a little bit better now. Mm -hmm. And that's great. And, I, again, I mean, we really want to do this not only for ourselves mm -hmm. because we want to go travel, but we want to be able to produce content that's not only applicable to this podcast, mm -hmm but also to our life. So I, I guess what I'm saying is like the podcast and everything we talk about on here, mm -hmm. it'd be one thing to just talk about it, but we're strong believers that you should be living what you're talking about. Yes. And so everything we talk about mm -hmm. philosophically, everything we discuss here in the podcast, we want to go apply in real life. And we hope that may, maybe you're somebody that's only listened to the podcast, mm -hmm. but maybe you can go look at the vlog and see, Oh shoot, these guys are putting it into application. This yeah. is more than just a, a thought process for mm -hmm. them. This is more than just these guys getting together and discussing things. They actually yeah. try to apply it and live it. Yeah. I think that's um what our content will you know. Um I don't know what I was gonna say. But anyway, um I mean that's you know what we believe. Um, knowing it is again uh, is really different from actually experiencing it. I mean, there are two different truths, yeah. in my opinion. I I used to not believe in that, but I do now because yeah. <laughs> after <I> experiencing, <laughs> you know, after the alignment in the mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I you know we 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 love to experience those ideas that we explore explore um, on the podcast and you know through books and things like that so um you know thailand happens to be a a good place to start mm -hmm. but um yeah anyway we can go right now but we're gonna make it happen uh, we, we just need to adjust our course a little bit but i think um we can probably go within three weeks two or yeah. three weeks yeah, yeah. so Early February and January. Mm -hmm. But again, as the the watcher, follower, you know, our friends, whoever you are to us, you can see that just because you have a challenge doesn't mean it's going to be a very easy course. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm really sorry. My brain is not working right now properly because i'm still recovering from all the sickness uh by the way the covid i don't know if it is still covid i have no idea because i've tested negative right but the tests uh could be false i mean i i saw that accuracy could be anywhere i mean the uh, inaccuracy of the test could be anywhere between 20 to up to 60 percent oh man here we go we're gonna talk about COVID test accuracy <laughs> they're getting controversial it ain't real birds ain't real no no i'm no, not saying it's not <laughs> i'm just saying that from the data we have uh the test could be false Don't listen to his science words <laughs> data. What but anyway mean? officially i test tested negative but I was sick for more than six days, okay? And I hadn't I hadn't been sick like that in I don't know. Childhood? Yes. Crazy. That this is, is crazy. crazy. Yes. To me it was crazy. But Yeah. It's definitely uh I mean maybe we're fortunate. We all these mm. years well, all these years. <laughs> I guess for two years we've avoided <laughs> COVID. <laughs> That you say all these years. That's multiple years. Two years we avoided COVID yeah. with our rough and loose lifestyle. This is how far we've come with the COVID. Yeah. You know? And the second we have to do something that 
is necessary we don't get COVID. We freaking uh, get it. Yeah. I mean, let, yeah, exactly. I mean, we've, both of us have really had, you know, have, have not had any luck in our lives. <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it always seems like, you know, something happens at a crucial moment. Critical time. Critical yes. moment. Something goes wrong. Awry. <sighs> And when we got that approved, actually, by you know from Thai government, we're so stoked because, I mean, with our luck, usual luck, I mean, this shouldn't ha- shouldn't be happening right now. Yeah. But and then also that was after Omicron, right? So we're so worried that I, you know, not even worried. I mean, we're kind of we're expecting that this wouldn't be approved, but but it they did. So we're so like, oh my god, this is something. I mean. Finally, we're getting some luck in our yeah, lives. Yeah. But then here we go, COVID <laughs> that we didn't catch for two years. <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> <laughs> tricked you. Thought you had a third thing going for uh, you. Uh, uh, not yet, buddy. Yeah. Which again, though, it's kind of weird because you could yeah. apply. Maybe this is maybe a negative thought process, but I see it as a positive. Is like right. Okay, despite that. Mm. You know what, man? There's just more ammunition. Like, mm-hmm. nope, this is the right path because it's difficult. It right. gives me like some indicators that okay, yeah, maybe this is the right thing. Because even though we've had all these, you know, like we said, we've got bad luck in a lot of ways. Yeah, we still get these small glimpses of hope that show us or mm-hmm. seem to reveal that oh yeah, this is the right direction. Right. You know, all the experiences we've had that just kind of point to, yeah, you know what? You guys are on the right trail or the right path and you're heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To me, though, like all those bad lucks, I mean, we, I talked about it that way jokingly, okay? But philosophically speaking, it means nothing. It really means nothing. It's just random events. I don't really care about it. And as an engineer, I, I've always had that attitude about problems that, okay, stop whining about problems, find a solution, you know, that has been always my attitude. So, um, it's disappointing for sure, but my immediate reaction is to, you know, find a solution to it. Yeah, well, what can you do to yeah. solve the problem? Yeah, so whining, uh, yeah, I mean, you should have that whining face, you know, <laughs> but not too, not too much, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just not productive, Can't not productive forever. at all, yeah. Wallow enough to get to the point where like, okay, we got to do something about this now. Yeah. And speaking of, again, other people's challenges, Mm -hmm. some of our favorite philosophers experience great challenges in their lives. Mm -hmm. We go back to Socrates, famously put to death. Granted, he probably could have gotten out of it from everything that's been written about him. But Mm -hmm. he chose to drink, I believe it was hemlock, so poison. Yeah, it was. What Mm -hmm. a challenge. Again, to be challenged... Even in society, because he was somebody who raised questions and taught, you know, he was famously charged with corrupting the youth Mm -hmm. because he said, you know, there's no gods. But basically, you know, I'm I'm consolidating a lot of this. There's no gods. And he taught thinking for yourself and famously pissing people out, pissing people off by asking why. Mm -hmm. Well, why? You know, like a child, never satisfied with the answers. So his life was full of challenges. But... If he would have just turned around because he met some friction and people were against his way of thinking and looking at the world, our world would be entirely different. A very different world. Socrates, right, famously went through all these trials and tribulations. I'm just going to mm-hmm. summarize what I just said. Mm-hmm. It seemed like there might have been an issue with the mic and the sound quality. Mm-hmm. But he constantly asked why, and he was famously charged with corrupting the youth, you know, and along with that, questioning the authenticity of gods and that's condensing it lightly but he was famously put to death via suicide he had to drink hemlock even though his friends could have gotten him out of that situation he is you know famously attributed with saying why should i fear death for all i know this could be the best thing to ever happen to me we have no experience of death mm-hmm. just their ideas surrounding it and so he drank the hemlock and died miserable way to go by the way and then nietzsche had an illness his entire life. Mm-hmm. I forget some type of stomach issue. I believe that no, he it's not. Was it stomach, stomach? Issue. I forgot the exact name of it, but it was um, some sort of like brain. Uh, well, I know he had mental illness and all that stuff later. No, I mean the sickness. I, I 
it has to do with his hat. I don't know exactly what it was. Okay, yeah. so you don't have the answer. I don't have the Son answer. Son of a gun. Well. <laughs> so famously suffered all his mm-hmm. life, was rejected by his lovers. He proposed to two different women, I believe, mm-hmm. and famously let down. Another person who suffered, but changed the very course of history, philosophically speaking, and mm-hmm. you know, our lives and every day, probably, and the things that we interface with. Yeah. But all these people that had changes or real impact on the world mm-hmm. went through challenges. Yeah. I don't know anybody that has had any real meaningful impact that mm-hmm. didn't suffer a bit or have to suffer through difficulty. So yeah. you should see challenges as a good thing, as maybe this challenge is the necessary ingredient to actually make real change and real impact in mm-hmm. not only my life, but other people's lives and potentially the world. Yeah. They should be seen as good things. Right. I think one thing that uh, that we talk a lot about going through discomfort and challenges is that it makes you grow, right? That we talk about a lot. I think the one another thing that we don't really often talk about is that... Um, I forgot I was thinking about it. <laughs> I was so ready. I was like, here it is. Here's the nugget of wisdom I'm getting today. And he fucking forgot. Can you believe this? Listeners out there, comment and let us know this is unacceptable. Oh, man. We should take it because I, I totally forgot. Um, yeah, my brain is just not working right now, but... Fine, I guess I'll talk about other people's challenges. His okay. challenges being mentally not together. Mm-hmm. I might have used another term yeah. 10 years ago, but I don't, I'm just going to say it. Patreon members, you're being retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Canceled. Canceled. <laughs> Episode 10. Last one. Um, <laughs> but Epictetus, for example, is another mm-hmm. guy that comes to mind who is famously a slave and one of the huge proponents and the founding fathers of stoicism mm-hmm. says you know you can change all these physical attributes in my life you know you can beat me you can starve me you can do all these things but you can't change the way i think about these circumstances mm-hmm. and these events yeah and that the guy is one of the four founders of stoicism mm-hmm. amazing the power of the mind the power yeah. of saying hey you know what fuck all these challenges all these difficulties it's not stopping me yeah. I'm not making it give I'm not letting it stop me from giving up on my dream. Just like the mm-hmm. one guy in the 14 Peaks. Yeah. Here he is. So many people would have said this is impossible. It's a suicide mission. You're mm-hmm. going to get yourself killed and he very well could have. Yeah. But he knew that was his dream. Yeah. He was after it. He was going to die doing that dream. Yeah. Failure or success I don't think was necessarily the point. I think it was just about Climbing that dream, yeah. staying on that path at yeah. any cost. And again, when you really do value something and you really have a goal and a dream that's at that highest level, you will mm-hmm. sacrifice everything to achieve it. Right. I, you know, I was really impressed by that guy because I don't know anything about mountain mountaineering, um, you know, that that world at all, but. In the beginning of the uh, documentary, all those you know famous people, Jimmy Chin, and those people are talk talking about like how little they knew or or none at all about this guy who just claims that I'm gonna complete this 14 picks, uh, 8,000 plus meters in in seven months. And who is this guy? So I've never heard of this guy. I mean, nobody knows who this guy is. And I was thinking that. Of course, he had a strong belief uh, in in, his, in himself, but also he had this idea. He just created this idea, a new challenge, right? That's great. But if he really didn't start actually doing the challenge, probably none of us would still, you know, know who this guy is. Yeah. Right? Still be a no name. Right. So I thought that I was thinking about, like, how important it is to actually take the action not just forming the idea forming the idea is noble too you know but like actually taking the action is just another thing right yeah a whole other animal yeah but again mm-hmm. just even able to dream up such a wild challenge 
yeah kind of gives it you kind of create the possibility for it yeah because you can sure. just dream it like mm-hmm. yeah it sounds corny and cheesy to say but if you dream it mm-hmm. then you can achieve it yeah to some degree i think there's truth there i think there's a little bit of truth in that statement mm-hmm. I mean, if you can dream it up in the real sense of a dream that's actually plausible and true to you, I very well think you could go out there and make it happen. It might take mm-hmm. years. It might take your entire life. You might die trying, mm-hmm. but at least you died living, truly living. Yeah. So go set some challenges so you can die alive. Yeah. Or we're wrapping it up. <laughs> <laughs> Is he is he even here today? <laughs> I think I think we have to end this for the sake of everybody watching. <laughs> okay guys. I hope you enjoyed the tenth episode. <laughs> the most well prepared one. <laughs> the most poorly executed one though. <laughs> That's this week's short version of the episode of the Theory of Living Podcast. Thanks for listening with us, we're Lafayette and Kai. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode. And if you'd like to help support us, we have a Patreon page where you can subscribe for exclusive content, early access, and full versions of the podcast. Also, please share it with others who you think may find value in our discussion. Leave a rating, a review, and please subscribe. Thank you again. See you next time.